Well, welcome. It's uh, Friday afternoon in Virginia, and uh, it's snowing. It's not that heavy, <laughs> but I've uh, succumbed to wearing kind of the outfit I like to wear when I ski, this kind of hat. It stays on, you know, but I haven't skied since before the the pandemic, and uh, I can't imagine how you'd ski now getting in a chairlift with people, some of whom lie and you can get it anyhow. So let's talk about the Supreme Court. I think it's interesting that the Supreme Court's <laughs> going to be taking up a case on affirmative action when we have uh, the leading contenders to go to the court are persons of color, three women. I think that's spectacular. I'm for Jackson, but I love the, uh, the contradiction in ideas between those six justices that have problems with uh, race and equality, affirmative action, you name it, very political, ideologically, who have a case and they probably hope to reverse this uh, affirmative action. At, I first uh, learned about it at law school. And the funny thing was there was a program to try to give possibility without quotas and so forth. And it was interesting, I think the year I went to law school, the women so, were so extraordinary <laughs> that uh, I think if there weren't some limitations, no guys would have gotten into the law school, Columbia. So uh, number one, I am excited about the Supreme Court and it is a break for Biden that he's needed. Uh, the second thing is the war. Uh, I, I don't see how we're going to come out on top on this in the sense that if you're confronting a bully, and that's Putin, and we've seen it before, and he can't work through Trump anymore to prevent NATO from uh, making incursions, if you will, on Putin's absolute dictatorial will. So he's got a problem with Biden, but it's different than with Hillary Clinton, who thought we had to deal sternly with Russia. And when Obama and Biden were in the White House together with Obama as president, they were trying to have open negotiations and to have peace. And Hillary was against that. And that's one of the reasons why Putin felt so strongly about being opposed to her as president. Anyhow, now we have a situation in which Putin is very concerned about uh, Ukraine getting help from NATO. And uh, NATO is pulling back a little bit, Germany and France, in part because of the supply of oil from Russia. And we talk about having troops elsewhere, but not anywhere near the place of action. So it becomes cheap talk. And I think there isn't any question Putin understands that. So I think we're just going to get embarrassed there because we haven't decided the only way to fight with a bully who uses force is to use force ourselves, to be the legitimate player in such an exchange, a military exchange. Uh, there is a, a break uh, for Biden today. As part of the infrastructure, he went to visit a bridge, and the bridge collapsed when he was there, proving the point. Unfortunately, 10 people were, were, were injured. And here in Virginia, we have a war going with the governor, not the usual kind of war that we have in Ukraine, namely over whether or not kids should be maskless. And even though his own son is going to a school in Bethesda, where he has to wear a mask, uh, we got a governor who says, well, no, you don't have to wear a mask. I'm hoping the courts will figure out that the law passed by the General Assembly answers the question. So I have to say I really enjoy today because I, I like the snow and I like the look. And you can see it's still falling, but it's going to be a delight. And tomorrow I probably won't be able to walk on it because uh, we have like nine degrees tonight. So it'll just turn to ice. So until tomorrow, have a good day. Bye bye.